Landowners in Okwaja, area of Lagos State, are seeking President Tinubu's urgent intervention over an alleged encroachment on their properties due to the realignment of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road project being carried out by the Federal Minister of Works, Kemi Foladiemo Asmo. Some aggrieved residents and landowners at Okwaja village within Etiosa local government area of Lagos State have now filed separate suits against the minister in his personal capacity, the Ministry of Works, as well as high-tech construction company that was awarded the contract, the Lagos State Governor and Attorney General of the state. The claimants fault the realignment of the coastal road, which has caused an encroachment on their properties, which they say is contrary to the provisions of the Land Use Act and the Nigerian Constitution. It started during the era of then Governor Bola Ahmed Tinobu as, gov as the governor of the state. But because of the huge resources that is involved in the construction of the road, Lagos State Government, they did what is called coastal road alignment. And since around 2002-2003, any landowner whose property falls within coastal road project will not be issued with building plan approval and even the title to the land. We were not even had talk less of giving any fair hearing at all. No service of notice of verification, no payment of compensation. Authorities add that they complied with all the necessary legal requirements before commencing construction and that it is crucial for boosting connectivity and economic activities along the coastal region. It says compensation is being paid to affected residents and businesses. We have our legitimate papers, the governor consent, I have it on my building, I have everything to my building, and that is where I'm living presently. So I don't know where they want me to go. That is why the citizen of Okwanja and all the people all around there started shouting that, no, it's not possible. We are not on the alignment. You said openly that you're going back to the old road alignment, old coastal road, and what is the problem now? Why are you not going back there? Why the vision? Though parties have filed actions at the Lagos State High Court, they say they are hopeful for an amicable resolution of the controversy. Kemi Folade, TVC News, Lagos. In other news, the Nigeria Movement for the Liberation of Western Sahara has welcomed the October 4 European Court of Justice judgment, finding European countries guilty of violating the sovereignty of Western Sahara. In the rulings, the court held that the European countries' agreements with Morocco to exploit the fisheries, agriculture, and natural resources of Western Sahara are illegal. The EJC president, Cohen Leonard, presided over seven judge panel, ordered that all such agreements without the consent of the Western Sahara people, as led by the Polisario movement, must cease within a year. The group in a statement commended the European Court of Justice for standing by the truth and advancing social justice while urging the European countries and European Commission to obey the final judgment of their own court by withdrawing from all Sahara, Saharawi territories and waters. Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shetima has called for unity among West African countries to address the various democratic challenges in the region. He was speaking at the launch of a $20 million West African Democracy Fund by international civil society groups to strengthen democracy across the region. Tivosa News, Jockey Adesa reports. A meeting of minds as leading international non-governmental organizations, including the MacArthur Foundation, Luminate, and Open Society Foundations, initiated a $20 million fund to address the problems facing West Africa. The $20 million fund will, over a period of three years, support activities to increase citizens' engagement with democratic and political transitions in the respective countries. Nigeria's vice president, represented by the special advisor on special duties, speaks on what he calls the baptism of fire received by President Bola Tinubu during the military takeover in Niger. The vice president says the region must unite to address its many problems. Many times such vices as corruption, nepotism, inefficiency, 
and socio-economic difficulties erode the trust and confidence of the people in democracy. So it is incumbent upon us, both in government and the elites in the wider society, to make sure that we do the right thing. The Commissioner of Political Affairs, Peace and Security of ECOWAS, Abdul Fattah Musa, says it's important to celebrate the successes achieved while paying collective attention to the problems. The place of women in our imaginaries of the future, but an acceptance that the bifurcation we have seen historically of two publics, where there is the urban Africa and the rural Africa, which is often neglected, cannot continue to be sustained without imperiling democracy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tuga, stressed the need to fund and build institutions for posterity. Mr. Tuga says democratic institutions in the region are too weak to stand up against strong leaders. These institutions need to be strong, so much so that no matter how strong a leader is, you cannot alter, you cannot uh, perverse the course of justice for those institutions. The Shew Musa Yerodua Foundation, Ford Foundation and other partners say it, despite a general preference for democracy among citizens, many have grown disillusioned with its practice. Notable civil society groups in the country are also part of the launch. Jokayatsa, TVC News, Abuja.